How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and we are back with part two of the Blunderbuss Guide. This time I will be showing you a different build. This will be the AoE damage build, and the AoE damage coming out from this weapon is massive. So there are a few things that we will have be talking about in this video. We're going to break it down into a few sections. We will briefly discuss attributes once again, and then finally we will go into the weapon build itself, and to top it all off, we will have a gameplay and combat example for the gun so you can get a good feel on how to play with the weapon. Alright, so first we're going to go ahead and dive into attributes, and if you haven't seen the last video, I highly recommend you go ahead and take a look at that. It'll probably be in the links somewhere up above, so go ahead and check that one out. Um, it's going to be a good baseline to get a lot of the information, but we'll briefly go over it again. So the Blunderbuss is a strength and intelligence-based scaling weapon. It scales slightly higher with strength than it does with intelligence, and since there is no other game or weapon in the game that scales with both strength and intelligence, it's going to be hard to do a split between those two stats, so I would recommend picking one category. I think it pairs well with strength weapons, and I also think that it pairs well with intelligence weapons. The intelligence weapons perks are a bit more appealing because they do add some useful abilities, whereas the strength perks offer things that are centered around melee weapons and the blunderbuss is not actually considered a melee weapon so you will not get a benefit or a bonus for a lot of these perks so keep that in mind but the more bulk of the damage is going to be coming from the blunderbuss so that's going to be or from the strength scaling on the blunderbuss so that's also something to take into account all right, let's go ahead and jump on over into Weapon Mastery. So here I've spent quite a bit of time, level 20, I maxed this bad boy out, and I like it. It's definitely one of the most fun weapons in the game, and this is going to be the AoE damage build. The left side is called Containment, the right side is called Chaos. The left side is more of your single target damage dealing skills, where the right, sky, right side of the tree is an AoE style build. So first we'll go over the left side where I have my extra extra points, but we're going to take our mainstay ability, Azoth Shrapnel Blast. This is a powerful move that will shoot a sort of uh, shotgun fan out in front of you, and it will also drop a grenade within that fan with the final talent of it. So it does end up doing a lot of AoE damage if you're in that close quarters range, and is going to be something nice to take. For the passives, we're going to go ahead and get Ramp, which is going to increase our damage every time we reload, and we will be reloading quite a lot, so this is something nice to have there. And then finally, we'll get Fortifying Aggression, which will give us Fortify every time we hit something, right? Uh, so it's just going to keep you taking less damage, which is going to be nice for the mutated dungeons, as well as any of the other hard content within the game. Now we're going to jump into the uh, main part here, which is going to be Chaos side. Mainly we're going to start with the Splitting Grenade. This is your best ability for AoE damage. This is your core ability, and it's going to have a lot of synergy. As you can see, it has a long cooldown, 30 seconds, but we're going to have a way to reduce that with the Chaos Talent Final Tree ability, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but we're going to take all of the talents for the Splitting Grenade, and especially this last one that will be called Incendiary Burst, which will allow your grenade to sort of put a damage over time effect for every bit that they get hit by. It can get hit by three times three of the grenades so it's going to stack up and be either 100 200 percent or 300 percent weapon damage depending on how many you hit them with it's going to be very important and then we will take mortar charge you are going to sort of load your blunder bliss with a mortar and you will enter a mortar firing mode you will get three shots on that and they will all do 100 percent weapon damage if you are farther away from your target they will end up taking more damage from the mortar so it kind of pays to get a little bit of a long range distance there. Uh, we will not be taking any of the talents for the mortar because they don't do very much as far as damage. They just give a little bit of stamina and movement speed, and the final talent does give you one additional bullet, but it's only one bullet. It's really not worth the three talent points it would take to get there, so we're going to put those into other damage sources like passives. So finally, we'll all talk about this last talent that's going to be double down. This is going to be the signature move of Chaos Tree, and it's going to be 
every 30 seconds, your next ability used will have its cooldown reduced by 50%. You want to make sure that whenever you have double down active, the first thing you use is your splitting grenade, because this is your highest damaging ability, and it has kind of a long cooldown, but if you half that with the double down effect, it will now be a 15 second cooldown, and with a few pellet shots from the passives coming in, you can refund this very quickly. Speaking of passives, let's go ahead and talk about those. We're going to take future planning, which is going to be something whenever you use an ability, all of the cooldowns for your other abilities will be shortened. So it's going to be nice to do. It's going to help you get your main splitting grenade ability back a lot faster, which is going to be really good. And then we will also take bite back. So every pellet that is a headshot will reduce all cooldowns by 0.5%. So this is pretty good. So it's, if you land a full headshot, it's going to be 3% cooldown reduction, which is definitely going to be really nice. If you pair this with refreshing move weapon perk, it can be very, very dangerous. You're going to be getting a lot of cooldowns back very fast. We will also take on a roll, which whenever you trigger an ability, you will gain a permanent fortify stacking buff that uh, will last for a little while, uh, stacks up to five times. So this is going to be really nice to have. Uh, it's pretty much going to be on you all the time because you're going to be spamming abilities nonstop. So this is going to be a good one to take. And then we will go into a few situational passives here. Buckshot is going to increase the damage uh, that you deal as long as you've not damaged that target within the last eight seconds. It's nice for an opening round with the grenade as well as the mortar uh, but it's really just kind of the best thing that we can take there's not a lot of great abilities of this in this section but you could consider trading that one out for extended chamber extended chamber lets you get a third uh, bullet loaded into your gun if you hold it for two seconds when you're at full uh, two bullets so it's something a little bit wonky to play around and I don't take it because I didn't like it for that reason I just took the flat 10% damage on the opening strike and just called it a day uh, but the next passive is going to be artillery this one is pretty good uh, it's going to increase your damage by 15% if you are 10 meters or further from your target and since the mortar will also do 35% more damage if you are further this is going to be a great pairing as well as having your grenade being your opening hit, just launching this from far away will be very, very powerful. The final passive that we're gonna have here is gonna be last chance. It's just really the best thing we can get, but it is pretty valuable. You're gonna get 50% damage reduction for four seconds whenever you fall below 50%. It does have an internal 30 second cooldown, but this can save you from some very sticky situations. So those are going to be the breakdown for the talents in the build, and now I am going to show you how this works. So essentially what you want to do is, um, since this is a big AoE damage build, hopefully somebody within your dungeon group would round up a lot of mobs, but you're going to do so and get them all kind of into the same area. You can tag a little bit if you want and get some monsters into the right direction. If I can uh, stop getting trolled here. <laughs> and then uh, you're simply just going to want to gather them up, shoot your grenade with Q, and then once your grenade has been shot, you're going to want to detonate it. And then you're going to go ahead and press E. And then finally, you're going to load your mortar bullet and start going to town with your mortar shells, which is going to usually wrap up most of the mobs that are left. Um, this is going to be the basic sort of combo. It does do a lot of AoE damage, but the single target damage is lacking quite a bit. So we'll go ahead and give that another rundown because we got a little bit of a funky uh, thing on the uh, wall there. So we'll go ahead and aggro a few of these mobs and gather them up. And we'll pull them in together once again and just demonstrate the AoE abilities uh, that can be done by this weapon here. So we'll tag a few other monsters and push up on the way. And then we'll go ahead and start to nuke them down. So we will once again start with the grenade Q, and then press E, and then load in your mortar shell. It's very simple, and once you have your mortar shell load in, you can just go ahead and shoot the rest of them and kind of nuke them down. So it's definitely not a bad build, but it requires a lot of like protection, I would say. It's going to be something that's a little bit hard for you to deal with. Like if you have a melee opponent on you in single combat and you don't have any way to peel for yourself, there's no mobility really. It's just pure AoE damage and that's the only thing that you kind of have going for you here, right? Uh, so you're just going to kind of look for big AoE damage and you're going to be looking to capitalize on your teammates grouping them up. I think this is a fantastic cooldown weapon. Uh, when I say cooldown weapon, I mean 
mean it's something that you would swap to as your secondary weapon and make use of all of its AoE tools. So this would be a great pairing with like a Great Axe per se. You could throw down the Gravity Well, use your Maelstrom, whatever you wanted to do. Group them all up together, and then finally top it off by pulling out the Blunderbuss and doing massive AoE damage and just nuking them all down. So that can definitely be a very strong option. Um, I do have a couple other things to talk about with the Blunderbuss in the third video that's going to be part of the series. I will be talking about the perks, the gems, the attributes a little bit more in detail, but I'll also be talking about the gear, what kind of gear you're going to be wanting to aim for with the Blunderbuss, uh, and that's going to be all of those things coming up in the next video and we do also have that special video the infinite mortar thing which i'm going to have coming up here soon i'm working on trying to turn it into a youtube short so i'm going to be experimenting with that a little bit uh, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that because it, it was a fun little uh, glitch or whatever you may call it i definitely had a blast with it all right that's going to be it for this one thanks for watching once again as always we have a subscribe like and bell button down below make sure to check that out as well as a discord and social medias in the description link and make sure to stay tuned to the channel for more new world and lost art content thanks for your time and watching the video and we will catch you in the next one